Okay. I was planning to, to fix this, this ticket that is about the function cache input. That is, there's a problem when, when you define the time span and you just use a number for the time span, what should be possible, of course. But for some reason, it fails. Um, we get a, an exception, Java long double cannot be cast to a time span. So, and I will start over. So I, I, of course, I have everything installed of my of my on my computer, but I'm I'm doing as this is not present yet. So first thing first thing I have to do is to clone the GitHub project. I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with GitHub. I hope everybody is. Do not come to my talk. I have a special pull request today. Okay, so I on GitHub I can simply take the the address of our project. We have two projects, two main projects, I have to say. That's the, the Lucy project and Lucy 4. So Lucy 4 is separated from Lucy 5 and above. So that's the, the reason is because they are completely, Lucy 5 is completely new, so it would have make sense to start with a new project and not care about merging and all that stuff. So what I'm doing, I've prepared an empty directory, then I simply git clone um, that project. And it's downloading, I would hope that goes well. And the first thing I always do, I let that download, the first thing I always do is or I try always to do is a test case. It's not always possible to do a test case for everything because sometimes you have really, okay, when I stand up in the morning, first thing, then it happens, but it never happens again. So there are extremely environment-specific problems with multi-threading and all that kind of stuff. So sometimes I can even <coughs> reproduce the issue. I can understand it, and but I can reproduce it. So. It's not always possible to do a test case, but whenever possible, I do one. So in that case, we have the ticket number 875. So I do a test case for 875. I already prepared that. Um, I can explain it. Um, um, projects. Checking if it's okay. It's now downloaded, so I have a Lucy, the GitHub Lucy project locally. So when I do, maybe I change first uh, and I git status. Good. Ah, okay, right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, CD Lucy, of course, in the subdirectory. Get status. So, <laughs> so um, we at the moment we have two main branches. That's the branch 5.0 and 5.1. Of course, you have the master branch, map branch, but I don't work at the master branch. I just when I have a stable situation, I merge the stuff from 5.0 at the moment to the master branch. And when 5.1 is stable, then we will merge 5.1 to the master branch. Yeah? So you mentioned you make test cases whenever possible. Yeah. Test cases are part of the uh, repository itself. We had in the beginning, we had it separated in the beginning, but then there was the problem with versioning. So test cases mostly also, or not mostly, can depend on the version of, of, of your repository. So we add a new feature, we have a test case for it, of course, the test case fails with an older version. So because of that, it makes sense. Even I don't like it, I try to have the repository as clean and close as possible, but test cases for me makes a lot of sense to have them build so in. Where they are? They are simply, um, we have inside Lucy, what I just downloaded, we have the directory test. And there are different categories of tests for func specific function tests. And 
Jira, I have to explain that. That that's test case is coming for from from um, Rilo, the old ones, and the new ones we do with they are specific for Lucy are on the tickets. So on the tickets I have the name the name ticket is chosen because in the beginning we was not with with um, Jira. We had a uh, uh, the from Bitbucket the ticketing system because of that a lot of history. Not that important. Okay. How many tests do you think are in Lucy 5 now? The I don't know, you can count it. <laughs> hundreds, thousands? Yeah, we, we are have a couple of hundreds. No, we are no, no, it's, it's way more. The thing is, you have a hundred, I guess, 600 CFCs, and each of those has several members. The, the problem is, we're still converting test cases to work with, because now Lucy builds on Travis. And all test cases have to run in that environment, and that's at the moment not the case. So we are still converting test cases so they work with Travis. They need a certain environment, certain the file system, or whatever. And we still are converting, so we have we have more test cases, but not all of them are converted to work on Travis and on my local machine and on every local machine. So. Um, that's work in progress, but all what you find in test is working on Travis and on your local machine. So, yeah. So if you uh, fix like a bug in a function, there's like the functions directory at the same level as tickets, right? So would you recommend uh, going into tickets and creating a CFC in there, and then maybe you personally would go and uh, switch, it switch it over to the functions? I, I would. I would always recommend writing uh, a test case with a ticket. Next to it, that might even remain there, and Misha might clone it into. Yeah, that was my point. Like, like I didn't want yeah, uh, to make sure that always tickets, the, always. the functions like would be moderated. The stuff that's going in the functions or yeah. tags or something is moderated by someone, so it's yeah. not the Wild West going out there and breaking uh, like your automated build. Uh, your well, you're going to be right if right. you're breaking the build. So yeah. <laughs> so. Normally I do it in to tickets, but but um, even it in that case we have a ticket that is only about cash put. So we could say, okay, we extend the cash put test case with this additional test. But I prefer to have the the ticket in that case, so Especially the ticket in the name. Then you can refer it immediately to the number. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I. Just copy it, that test case in I did. Um, that's this one. Um, cache is a little bit special because I first have to set up a cache and destroy the cache afterwards. So I don't expect anything to be in, in the environment. Of course, in Travis, I haven't anything that's just started up. So I have. To create a cache and delete the cache, that that is function I have taken from the cache put test case. Why didn't you use the administrator CFC? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Administrator CFC is calling these admin functions. Yeah. Exactly. Um, we first we had to extend the administrator CFC, then it would yeah, work. <laughs> but what I. Test case is really very simple. I simply do a cache put um, and set the number that breaks, and that's it. So then I already can go in and um, Lucy. That that's a little bit history. Um, the build process is in in slash loader um, because we build the loader projects. There are sub projects. You can see that if you go in the repository on multiple. Um, projects um, yeah, that was right we see you have the, the core project the loader project debug project maybe I become to that later and I go to the loader project because the loader builds the Lucy char and that's what I want to do um, in the future we will have a base project that builds everything but that's not the case yet so I have simply to switch the loader then Lucy supports Maven and AND, like I said before. So if you have installed AND, you use AND. If you have installed Maven, you use Maven. If you have installed both, you do whatever you like. Um, there is a, a shortcut with AND. If you 
if you just want to build and you don't care the test cases, you can simply do AND FAST, then it does not execute the test cases. If I do just simply AND, it will execute the test cases as well. So, Lucy starts to build and will execute the test case. That takes a while, uh, normally. Um, you, you see it is, that's the first run, I just downloaded the, the project, now it downloads the extensions it needs, because every Lucy core defines the extensions it wants to have, and because they are not bundled in the, in the repository, they get downloaded now, because of that it takes a bit, li little bit longer to get all these extensions, but that does, does it only once, so the second build will know, ha already has it locally, and does it not download this extension, of course, Extension also have versions, so it take care on the, to have the right version. Um, maybe we can now look. It will break, and we already have the the exception that it has a problem with converting that. That is happening on on bytecode level. So on the bytecode we create already take care of that conversion. Yeah. Is there any way to just run one test case instead of the whole suite? Yeah, you can. <laughs> At the moment, you will simply delete all the other test cases. So. <laughs> <laughs> you could have come up with that yourself. <laughs> I do that, to be honest, very often that I just remove everything or point to another folder. I can also go to the to the ant file and point to another folder because that's hard coded there, so a relative hard coded and. Or I simply delete all of them. So Sounds and like then I go can go to to. Um, Sounds like a good enhancement. Yeah. yeah, of course. But I just then you can go to to your to your, to your um, um, and um, GitHub Git tool and revert all the the removals and uh, you're good to You're using TestBox, but you're not using an HTML web-based runner. You're just directly calling TestBox. Yeah. I, inside of AMP, outside of any servers, there's no way to hit it in the browser like you would normally. Yeah, because we we run it um, with JSR two two three. We don't have a server running that Did is responding on a certain you port. You showed that before, right? That was the part. That, that was the part I oh, showed okay, before. Okay. Yeah, you even helped me out with calling test box oh, that yes. way. I'm That's your work. <laughs> only, if, only if it's good. Oh. <laughs> um, you can see where it is at the moment, still still building, so we will see there comes test box when it um, solves the problem. Um, but I can go into the build, oh, where I am. So that, that issue is for sure in the core, so Lucy is divided in, in two main projects, like I said, it's the loader, the loader takes care on the the, all the interfaces are defined in the loader and and the public appearance, let's say that, and the core is the functionality itself. So when it comes to functionality, everything is to the core. And so the Lucy API is accessible through the Lucy loader, and the runtime is the core that Lucy uses in order to well, do all the CFML magic. So we have we have a Maven structure also here. I go, don't go into that. So we have runtime stuff. It's mostly in the runtime folder. There are commons for functional libraries, stuff like that. Runtime is runtime functionality. And transformer is everything that has, it could, a bad name would be compiler or something like that, or compiling or whatever. It's really the compiling, everything that comes to compiling is in that, in that folder. Um, maybe I have also to say that this, these are all Eclipse projects. You can simply um, load them in Eclipse and see everything there. Everything is organized. I don't do that it now, but um, you could do that like like I showed showed you here. I have this this um, this projects. I can also go there in core, whatever, and have there all the stuff here. So I know that the problem. Is I always look that up or looked a little bit in the problem and um, yeah, but let 
me see. Cost for the transfer. I can also buy code cost. Okay, I do that. I don't know why it doesn't find it. Bytecode, cost. It's really there are specific costs in Lucy for some some main types, Boolean, double floats, blah blah blah. And then is a one cost other that costs everything else. So the problem has to be here. Um, in in the costing of that, there is a first there is this all that goes all over a over a static method where it tries to decide if it can use another one. If not, it should go. I don't go into details here. So the problem, in my opinion, is that it here has no definition for timestamp. So I can look it up. B C. Basically, it doesn't know how to automatically guess. Uh, to a timestamp. Right, it has no specific rule for it, so it goes back to the default rule, what is simply do a Java cast. And that is what we see, that fails. It doesn't, it can't cast a double to a time span. That is simply not working. So, so I have him teach him now. But I'm a little bit confused. I, to be honest, I already did show that up yesterday, and I was a little bit confused that that is not the case. So I was looking into it, a lot of code. T, do you see we have for T we have time zone, but we, we don't have here should be time span. So I don't know why it wasn't here, so I was looking to the default and I saw it is here. But it never comes here because it already it goes in the switch, then it leaves the, the switch. It goes in the T T part in the T case and it leaves it. So I assuming that the problem is historical that in, in earlier version, there was no T, so it worked. But then we had a time zone with, with Lucy 5, we had a time zone. So we had that case, then time, time stamp so never worked. So you never had a test case in time span before. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> and that's a, the point about having test cases. This never will happen again in the future, but you screw up stuff all the time. If you do some changes, and you screw up something else. So that's the reason we have test cases in the first place. I was about to shoot myself in the foot because I was, was about to say, I don't know, before it was working. But you know, yeah, yeah if you would have had a test, a test case for time span, a time span, it would work, yes, and now if you change that, then that shouldn't be here. You're right, we don't have a test case. Okay, I simply do the add this here, and then it should work in my opinion. So, when we go back to the build process, you see here, here it enters uh, executing the test cases, and all the test cases. When when there is everything right, it just simply outputs pass test pass it blah blah blah, as short as possible, and somewhere it should fails. Pass it in. Okay, there's something else failing with HTTP. I don't know why. Maybe had problems with the internet connection or something like that. It's a timeout or something like that. I mostly to search it. I hope that test box will improve the command line output. Um, at the moment, as I'm looking for <laughs> for the, for failures by searching for errors. So mail was failing as well. Okay, and here we have the. <laughs> Test case in question, so ALDEF 8875, and we should have that it fails. Cache put, you see that on that line it was failing, and the message, that case you go down to the Java message, um, class, class cost exception, it's exactly what we see in the ticket, cannot be cast to a time span. So, now that I did that change, I simply re-execute the test case, uh, the build, and... Will be faster than subsequent times? Yeah, because... Yeah, I could now delete everything. Of course, you can... There is the 
No, because it doesn't have to delete any of the libraries. Or it have to download the extensions. Sure, yeah. but it still takes a lot of time. So it execute test cases takes time. So it's also, even you do and fast, it's still not that fast because it still builds the, the Lucy administrator. So it has to start up Lucy, build the administrator, and all that stuff. It still does a lot, even without the test cases. So it's, we are still more than a minute to execute it without the test cases. And of course, that's not a way to really to work on it. So the best is we have the Lucy, Lucy debug project. That also, when you get the repository, um, you also get the Lucy debug project. And the Lucy debug project allows you to, there's a, a class inside that is run as a Java application. And you simply can define a port here if you, I think I already changed that, by default it's 8080. But you can change that and simply start that project in Lucy in, in Eclipse, run as Java application. Then you have that that stuff you you have in Eclipse just running on that port without the Lucy core file. It's really the pull code executed, and that also um, also um, has a web root where you can where you can add your stuff and test directly or check your changes you just did. So it's better when you. Develop you use that that debug project not the way I did with the with the build process That's of course every change you have to wait a minute. That's not really the way to go it's just um, um, How you can do it so it's now it's in test box here and I Assuming it it would work so it starts now the test cases <laughs> what I have, what I offer it for me, it's, I would that is the way when I can execute the test cases because maybe I have to execute all the test cases because maybe that influence another test case, so I have to execute all of them. And when they pass, my next step is that I go to I have them that I already did that change in my main project. You can see that's the same. Um, I just removed there a comma and an additional, but I removed that below and added above, so that's exactly the same. Here is the test case, and that's also the same. Then I simply can commit that. I changed uh, the version. That's in that case, that's the location of my uh, repository. I go to the loader. They're having that's for one file is for Maven and one file is for um, for Ant. I plan. I already try to automate this. I still that's the, still the only step I have to manually do. But I plan to automate that step. That it always updates the version automatically. So at the moment, I still have to do that manually. So if we send a pull request, should we update the version, or should we allow you to do that when you merge it? I do that okay. normally. So when you pull request, you just do the changes and. And good. So, but like I said, the, the idea is that it automatically updates the version. So maybe even get even more, more, and more version. But I, for me, every commit anyway has should have a new version. So, so that really makes sense that it, that process goes automatically. And maybe somebody that is very familiar with Travis can help me out to get that running. I ha kids couldn't figure that out. A good way to do it. And maybe on that, the Travis script that is located in the root of the project. If somebody is familiar with Travis, any help on that is welcome. I asked, I already asked him about help about us, but he couldn't help me. Maybe he had some time or interest. So um, I add this, this to. This this version updates as well. Then I simply do the comments. Comments 
Huh? Can we wait for the test to finish right here? We can do that, yeah, sure. I was <laughs> thinking that in the meantime, I prepared a... <laughs> I did at all. Okay, you, you see build successful. So we have, it is passed. I can also look for it. So, 875. That was pass it, one test, pass it in 140 milliseconds. That is okay. So, but still, I even, that step, for example, when I'm, when I'm working in the train, for example, where I have a bad internet connection, I mostly don't do that. So I don't build locally or test locally. I can even skip that step and go directly and commit and see what happens online. Travis will tell me. So when I commit that that change, because I do no tag yet, I do the tag when everything is fine. So I can do multiple commits and the tags, I set the tag when it's fine. So I'll push that change. Then I will see on Travis. Can you just push that to 5.0? 5.0, yeah. Why not 5.0? Fixes go in the current version and get merged in newer versions. Okay. It's always the same. And then they go also down to master. But they only improvements happened in 5.1. No fixes. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's gone. Um, Is there a you have. And there should be an internet connection here somewhere. Uh, do you know where? Okay, I think it's 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 coming again. Okay. Okay, that failed as well. Push. Yeah, okay, ah, okay, it's seven, yeah, 17 minutes. <laughs> you had my cable. Um, try it again. Just a sec. Well, this is five took so long, you had to keep plugging his laptop in. On the floor, I think, is a power strip. Yeah, I see you. It's fine. <coughs> okay. Okay, and now it should work. Okay, it's already running, 5.0 uh, branch, and it's building now here. We can go into that details. I even see, I'm not sure if everybody's familiar with Travis. It's quite the same with like Jenkins. I just see the same or more or less it, it's downloading because it's preparing more so it's first preparing the, the environment so because of that it takes longer now it's downloading all the stuff then it will all do the same build all line that happens on the Travis server and not on the machine that is all on the Travis server and when when it's successfully built it triggers it it uh, deploys the project to Maven. So all builds go automatically to Maven. Um, so there is a, a pre-Maven step. So all go to the pre-Maven and the stable releases that are not marked as snapshot go directly to central Maven. So, and then the, what you have here is automatically triggered to build a new release. Then you have the, the snapshot that comes automatically. So as soon we have it successfully built, you have automatically everything is here to download. So okay. It you see now it's, it's downloading. That's the same same step we had before. It's downloading the extensions that they they are coming from from Lucy, and then it starts to compile and all that stuff. So if we're doing this locally on our own install, obviously we're not going to be dealing with Travis. Well, when we run the local build, 
how do we test that on our own local user? What, what files? Well, we just did that with apps. If you just hit apps, it will just call everything from the command line, all the test blocks. Yes, but does that upgrade my local Lucy installation? No, you just. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, okay. Um, okay, what, what you have, right, what you have, we just, we did success, successfully build over here. Um, build successful, if as soon as you have that, you go to, that was in projects, okay, I was already in the right one, dev O, then Lucy, then the loader because the project is in the loader and there you have that that's Maven specific but I even do that for Ant so you have the target folder and there you have uh, the Lucid LCO file and the Lucid char that was just built you see the date that's correspond and when I, when I start it again I can for example also do Maven clean install okay why is not writing the search, the search, the search, the search. Ah, okay. I see. <laughs> Maven clean install. So it starts over, and now it's it's made it's built with Maven. And of so course, now the target folder is gone for the moment um, until it ends. What do you do with that LCO file? That is the here. one you put in the deploy folder. That's the same you can download here when you go to the website. The releases you always have the you can download here the the Lucy char where you can replace the original char with that one, or you have the core file the Lucy core that's that one that is also a dot lco file that's where you simply can put in the deploy folder and it will update the Lucy version on the fly. So maybe you simply can drop it in the deploy folder. That's good. You can, for example, per FTP you can update your Lucy version per FTP. If you like that, so you don't have to start it anymore. Yes, that that uh, you can't build it locally anymore. You could with, with Lucy four point five, you could build the Express. Um, um, when I can say it, you could build the Express with the regular build process. But we have taken that out. Now the Lucy Express is built online by by this this web service. Did so But if you're interested to do to build the Lucy Express yourself, that is really there is a project um, Uh, what's the name of the project? I think yeah, Lucy data provider. There are two, two, three things that the extension provider. You have the update provider and the downloads page itself. That there is all here, and the update provider builds all that stuff. See, so that's that's when you look into it. It's not very complicated. That it's a. A REST update provider, CFC, that's a REST um, web service that does everything without uh, environment necessary. So it downloads the stuff from Maven and all that stuff. It's, it's simply you can add this, this to, your, to your environment, define it as a REST service that you have to do in the administration, then you can build your Express yourself. So we was a lot of thinking, should we still have a project to build that locally somehow, but I think it, the idea was to automate everything possible. So I, I don't want to take care, I just can kick the web service, make that stuff, and it does. Yes? Best is the when you have a, a fix, for example, best do a pull request for the the branch 5.0. If you have a pull request for a feature, then do it, for it at the moment for 5.1. So for the current beta project. So 5.0 or 5.1, depending on it's a feature or a, a, a fix. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can do that. If you're going to do more than one form, you have to. Yeah. But you, you would submit your form back to like the five. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the point. That's important that you don't pull to the master branch, because I, I never, like I said, I never work on the master branch. Yeah, I also did here. Um, build success. Okay, we already built it again. Um, then, as you see here, get status. I'm on the. Okay, I'm on master. Okay. <laughs> I want to switch on. Uh, that's wrong, but um, yeah, that's, that's okay. okay. That was a failure from me. That shouldn't be, but that's all in the dev o object. Normally, in the, in the project here, I'm in five dot o. That what what the one I just submitted is five dot o. Um. We haven't them written down, so so um, you you see it in the code, you see it in the codes that that um, I try to, the same has always the same name is for me a very important rule. So don't use different names for the same stuff. I hate that and and of course camel notation having the the angle bracket on the same line um, stuff like that. You, you see that in the code, but there is I'm not very hard on that. So okay, this variable. Name doesn't follow as long as it's in English, it's fine. So don't make it French or whatever. So, but other, otherwise, I'm we are very open on that. As long as the code is clean, I have no problem with it. The only way it really pisses me off is the angle bracket on the next line. I can't. That's shaking me all the time. <laughs> um, and Brad, I just now build it with 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 um, with Maven, and you see there is a couple stuff more that Maven did, but we still have the LCO file and the char file in place, and of course it. That case, it also does the Java talk, it does sources, char, and all that stuff, but still the same. And of course, if if I would, I could also simply do if I want to to deploy deploy to Central Maven. The only change I would do is simply to to um, get get um, what I want to do. I don't know Maven. Clean deploy, and then then it will ask me some passwords or passphrases because you need access. You have a private. Yeah, we have a private access to Maven, but this way I can already deploy to Central Maven. I can also do that locally. <laughs> Normally for snapshot, I never do because Travis does exactly the same. But I could. We can look. It's green, so yes. Okay. So the download page it has maybe maybe I have to explain it normally has problem to display everything. So there is the comment to show everything. Go to uh, then you can sh um, say raw lock. Then you have the raw lock. So at what point when I'm mashing down the update button on my Lucy five server here will just pop up and show us on the snapshot release? Sorry again. At what point is it though? Yeah, so I'm hitting, I'm sitting here clicking update for the past ten minutes or so, just waiting to see when it's going to show up, so I can install the snip code in my Lucy five. Oh, in the download page. Yeah. Well, an update, update, update. Oh, uh, okay, okay. What, what, what I didn't did yet because I always do. I would go. Maybe we can do that step by step. Okay. At the moment, that ticket, I should. Of course, I should click start development. I didn't do <laughs> that. <laughs> okay, so my next step is is would be what I should do is the request QA, and then I have somewhere the commit I just did five to go.
then I always put that simply put that in in the in the command and as soon the 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 build was 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 success, successfully done I then set the tag so going back to to here then I simply set the tag for that that was that one and the number was I'm never sure about the number 11 Ah, 12, yeah, right. Just make always make sure of that, so... It's also there somewhere. Ah, no, 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 that was dot one, five dot one, so that one, push the tag. Okay, it's, I'm tag it, and it again, that was here um, it was still assigned to me but of course I could if I if I for me at the moment Travis is the QA so if the QA Travis passes the Q QA was successful for me so that's the reason I wait the Travis to pass and then um, as soon as it's passed I can set that ticket on fulfilled so I can say okay now issue is deployed on on that version 5.0.1.11.12 yeah. <laughs> okay if somebody does a oh, Ah, I didn't that create that? Okay. Yeah. Right, and the ticket also. You can assign it to me at that point. Um, and what is important that the queue, uh, the pull request also triggers Travis to build, even if it's not deployed. In that case, it doesn't trigger a deploy that uh, releases a new version, but it triggers Travis to build it. So you also, I, I and you will see if you change had influenced the build or that does break something yeah but, but, but uh, we still do to uh, look over the changes and maybe adjust or com complain or whatever okay I just triggered the, the, the new the, the tag and now it is building again and you see now you have the tag number instead of the branch number but it's it's no change to that one. So, problem is you always attack, always also triggers a build. It, I can avoid that. I don't know if it's possible to avoid it. I haven't found a way to avoid that the attack also triggers because there's no change. Yeah. Maybe I can in the Travis script I could avoid that, but it doesn't hurt me. It's not running on my server, so. I don't really care if Travis has some work to do. Okay, yeah, yeah. What really was funny when I was coming over to the States, I have we also have Travis where it builds, and as work, everything works on Travis, but um, and on lo my local machine. But as soon as I was here, we, I had a problem with time zone issue in a ticket date ad was failing. I had no clue why Travis was passing. So Travis maybe was in the time zone also, or had the time zone set that was working, and and yeah, it was that that case. And 
And this time zone here has a breaking point that is is beyond Travis and my time zone. So even it's possible that even Travis and my local machine passes or my local environment it can still breaks in other places. So so Travis is for sure good that we everything run on Travis will have a neutral environment, but another environment still can break it. So like I learned with state at. Okay, more questions? It it builds the it builds that's the branch you had here because I ha hadn't tagged it it just informs you about the branch and the comment the commit and you see it you you see it fixes eight point seven five that was the commit uh, message and that's the branch and if it has a branch information it outputs the branch it sorry the tag but if there is no tag set it simply outputs the branch and fixes. Fixes happen on the 5.0 at the moment. In the, uh, with Rilo, we had the, always a dev branch um, for further versions, but now we do working with version numbers. I think it's more clear, especially because we do more and more changes to older version. Because at the moment, we also maintain 4.5 still do bug fixes in 4.5. I will also do that bug fix in 4.5, for example. Um, so we, we more and more maintain all the branches for certain stuff. So because of that, I we, we cho choose the major version number for for the branches. Sorry. But for me, it just the, the user makes this this decision because people a lot of people still asking for four point five. So couldn't you do that in four point five? Because we are still relay on four point five. So okay, security patches, of course. We do all security patches for older version a, a lot back, so that's that's in any case an exception because many people's we will see still even in discussion to do security patches for Rilo. So <laughs> even we we don't support Rilo. People ask us, can you not help out and do that for Rilo 4.2 that security patch? And we we was in contact with the remaining Rilo guys, but there was no really interest that we helped them, so we didn't. But we would even do that. So, be, our interest is to to have half the users happy. So, and if well, relay, the higher ratio, that's the yeah. yeah. So, uh, and this is important. You normally have a backlog. Maybe just to point out, we have we, we talked about that a couple of times that you uh, we have a lot of CF or we have CFML based functionality and we also plan to extend that whenever possible and that is in a regular installation that is on the Lucy server context library you have the tag and function directory where certain for example in function you have the CF dump tag at CF dump function sorry and in tag I think that's also here. That's the dump tag, so that's all everything CFML based. So, if you if you don't like the functionality of that, you can extend that there. You can. Or the bug fixes in the same way. Like, we have no CFML. We have every, the bus should know CFML. Um, and so, 
it's about to you see there is a bright about uh how we have done to the bar of the line. And are those tagged differently in the like maybe like if I wanted to look at tag uh well, it's just a that. different directory in the same uh, same directory. No, I meant in like uh, in Jira. Is there a way to search for issues that only deal well, with what we see it now? The problem is that mostly the users don't know whether it's affecting the use function or not. Because you know someone says, Well, uh use is very inspect with blah 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 throwing an error. They don't maybe know that behind the scenes there is a built-in function which you see it now in those are. They just assume that it's part of the DC runtime function thing. Right? If you're looking for some easy tickets to get your feet wet, maybe that's something at least you can do something someone will even notice this year and find some very easy fixes in a CFML base for people to they know. Get one well, up. Maybe we should just have a channel of where we are publishing those. Right? So yeah. And also something we, we plan to to extend in the near future is, is the functionality we have. In I, maybe I have to say in the be beginning we don't really like this this um um components that are was coming with with CFML, so the query CFC and all that stuff, we don't really like that as well at, at all. But we plan to extend this this components in the future so that there are a lot more functionality and that that they may be even co could replace all the built-in functions. So that you for example you should, instead of using query new you write query double quote double quote new or create or something like that. So it's static functions we support. Sorry. Um, we would extend these CFCs with static methods. I mean, that's the way how you're, you're accessing static methods. And since it's not many of you are Java developers, you guys know what the static, uh, what the static slope is or what the static method are. Who does not? Okay. Well, the thing is, if you're, for instance, uh, let's assume you have a, a, a CFC that contains lots of functions that are manipulating scope. How many of you have that? A CFC that does some things, right? Okay, what you always have to do is you have to instantiate that CFC, put it maybe in the application scope as a single, right? And then you just call that instance of that CFC all the time. Uh, with static methods, they are actually class methods or component methods. It. You can call that directly, directly without even instantiating the CFC. You can just call CFC name colon colon function name without having the instance. Right? So those functions are called static functions or static methods. And we have introduced in Lucy 5 already also the static scope. And the static scope allows you to set component variables, but not for the instance, so not when you say object new or new something, that is already in the class, right? So in the component, sorry. And so if you set that in the static scope of a component, all of the instances that are already existing know about this variable. In, in Lucify, yes. Nowhere else. Yes. So in Lucify, well actually I wanted to show that, but we're running really out of time. Okay. So maybe you can show that in issue. So you if should. I wanted to get my feet wet, just make it You can, of course. Well, the thing is, we have done that a few times. There is a way to use different, uh, well, that's a perfect place to put in the static, uh, to use static scope for that. Because imagine when you're calling CFDump, every time it has to do all over the same things, load stuff from somewhere, maybe where you have your CSS or whatever it's going to be. If you put that in the static method or static scope, um, it, every time the dump is an issue, you know, instantiating because it needs to display some, something like, for instance, JavaScript methods and everything that are in there, you can put them in static methods and you don't have to kind of instantiate a whole component of uh, CF dump with CFC here. So you can definitely go on and do some stuff and at least propose the changes because, in my opinion, dumps should, be, should look ugly. Errors should look ugly. Prevent them. 
So it should be a nice uh, message that will open. On AWS, what I would say, talk to Patrick in the, in the corner there. He's our AWS guy. He has everything you need to know. Okay, I, I really can't tell you that much. I always have to refer to, to Patrick. So, so whoever wants to know. But what, what we really try, we have two main things we are working on. We already improved for Lucy 5, but there's still a lot to do. That is that is improving Lucy that it can run better outside the servlet environment. So that it starts up fast, that it is very configurable. We are system variables, like we have the new one we, we talk today about it. And that is for us very important that you get it as run as fast as possible. Um, we had another right lamp somehow what does lampy or what was that project? That it's really it's really about microseconds how fast you get Lucy up, so execute something and get it down again and we really try to improve Lucy on on that that it runs better everywhere. Yeah, because now the startup time for instance in command box, how much is it? Five, six seconds? How how fast is the startup time of command box? Yeah, sure. It can be as fast as two or three seconds. My laptop for like four or five is so slower. Okay, well, we want to get that down to, well, milliseconds if possible. Um, but anyway, you had a question. Uh, yes, but the static, um, static operators in Lucy 5. Yeah. So when I do static in Java, um, if, I, uh, if, if I created some sort of an object that would call a static method on it, Java will give me a warning saying, you know, you didn't really have to do that. I could just call it static. Yeah, so right. The same kind of warnings in. Well, that's, a, that's, a good, that's a good idea. No, it, there's no warning yet. Okay. Yeah. So that because you could rec recognize. Well, the thing is, we can't really recognize whether it's at compile time. We can't do that because you know at compile time, the thing, you can't really recognize that that is actually a uh, a call of a static method of that object because you need to do a lot of. Because Lucy is a non type language, right? So. Therefore, this can be anything like a string coming from and then evaluating and then drop something. Like you could recognize it at runtime. At runtime, that's yeah, the only that possible. maybe that could be that in the debug call when you'd have debug enabled, you could see information like that. And the file, that that's what I'm asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any file on debugging will have a warning to the output or something. Yeah. Like that. Nolan, can you file a uh, feature request on Trick and Jack? Yeah, you have a question. Um, I was just wondering with static methods, is there still a way to instantiate the current? Right there. Like sure, sure. I, I have somewhere. Or do you have to? Because like the only way I've been able to see it work is still have the reference that holds the path. Is there a way to instead like instantiate the current path and make something like that? Um, you you don't need the full path. You just when you for example when you take this example here, you have a a, a static method. Then you still simply can. For a, a singleton is a good example for what you want to do a singleton. You still simply can use the you need to use the name inside, but not the full pass. Just so the name is enough. So something like self no doesn't exist yet. So we, we discussed about that, but for simplicity we just kept on the name. Normally that's not a problem, but but so it was in discussion to it that self we add the keyword self. But that would also co cause a lot of problems because a lot of application will use uh, self somehow. We saw that with when the the scope local was added because until Cold Fusion, I'm not sure six. There was no lo there was a local scope, but the keyword local was not available. So a lot of people did inside the function they did local equal and they. Uh, assigned that to var, and they had a local uh, struct inside the function, and and ACF did a lot of 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 uh, ugly function added a lot of ugly functionality to 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 avoid problems with that. That is still in CFML until today, also in Lucy, and so it's always a risk to do use a common word like self. Okay. Any other questions? That's maybe that's that's just an example. That's in the Lucy docs, a simple example. We have also somewhere a singleton example. Maybe we can extend that here. How to use that? 
So uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention is that 5.1 is a compatibility, compatibility release to 2016. So I have here, uh, or maybe you can show that that one spreadsheet where yeah. we have that. Uh, okay, do that. Um. We didn't publish that. Maybe we could. I think that's that one. Just that you know what these are all, uh, the things that we have done there. Um, so safe navigation is in there. Literal ordered struct so that you could do struct new order and sorted. Um, you can you can for the struct you can use the how do you do the. The, yeah, the angle bracket notation, you know, uh, that. No, I need the angle. Oh, angle. The eckige is angle. Yeah. It's the, 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 the it's in curly. curly bracket, okay. No, no, angle bracket, bracket. okay. So then I said notation. wrong before. And the way passed by reference, that was something that Lucy had already in there. We can publish this document somewhere. Yeah, there's a lot of function, but, but it's not really. A lot of stuff we already had, but we had to modify it so that it works exactly the same way as it did, did does in ACF, but it still works the old way. That was the most complicated stuff about the most complicated work about it. But we also have the all the the new member functions. That was an easy task. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. Um, thank you very much.